In this video, I will go over what I expect to see for photos in data sheets, presentations, etc. I'm going to start with a, what I call a macro example. In other words, an example that you're familiar with of why you should crop your pictures. Here I have a lovely picture. My question to you is, what did I take a picture of? What was my purpose in taking the picture? Now there's a lot of sagebrush, there's a lovely mountain range, there's beautiful sun rays coming through the clouds. What exactly was my purpose in taking the picture? Well, on my camera I have a zoom. And when I zoomed in, there is a hawk sitting on a sagebrush. If you look really hard, it's right there. Suppose my camera didn't have the zoom function and I were to crop this, I would be able to blow up what we're seeing here. Here is a micro example. This is a picture that I took through the ocular of a microscope using my smartphone. And you can't really tell, like in my example of the picture of the hawk sitting on the sagebrush, you can't really tell what exactly am I after. Is it what's by the pointer? Is it the general look? Now what happens is, when you look through a microscope, you see something different than what your camera does. It's because your lenses in your, in your eye are autofocus. So what I did is I went ahead and cropped this to show you exactly what I saw with my eyes or the reason why I took the picture. I cropped this part right here and you can see that there are bacilli and this is a capsule stain and you can see beautiful examples of capsules around these bacilli. Make sure you always crop your pictures so that I can tell why you took the picture. If you send me something like this, I don't know why you took the picture other than this is cool. Or even worse, your lab partner took the picture and you know it's important, but I don't know that you know why it's important. And even more importantly, you have a record of what you actually saw through the microscope versus what your camera saw. Keeping to the same format, I have a macro example. Now if you look at this picture, you can see these lovely wild turkeys. Wild turkeys have great camouflage. You want to make sure, as someone presenting a picture, that people know why you took the picture, and also make sure that they spot the turkeys too. So I put in a title, Turkeys on the Way Up to Big Springs, Utah, and the date. And this also um, helps you with your record keeping. This way you don't have to go back and look up when you took this picture or what it was. After a few weeks you may forget. I also want to put in some labels. So I want to label the turkeys. I also want to label the rocks so that you know that I know that these are rocks and these are turkeys. And then I draw arrows to them because a label without anything to indicate what's in the picture is very unhelpful. Now this is kind of a silly example, but it will become more clear when we go to the micro examples. The first one that I'm going to start out with is a picture of an auger plate. And for this one, I labeled it as if we were at the portion of the semester where the class is learning morphology terms. So I have my title so that you know where the sample came from. It came from the bottom of a purse. I'm sure I've just grossed you all out. And we also want to put down where, what kind of auger it was grown on and what temperature it was grown on. Once again, this is important for record keeping so that you remember these important details. And then I have the terms for describing these colonies. I have round entire, so it's a round colony. It's got a smooth or entire margin, and it's bright yellow. Then I have an arrow going to it so that as the instructor, I know that the person who took this picture and labeled it knew what they were referring to. Same goes for all of these. So when you are putting in titles and labeling, keep in mind that part of this is for your record keeping benefit. It's for you to learn the terms so that you have examples to go back to and look at. And it's also for you to communicate to me, the instructor, that you know what you're talking about. Now also notice that I put the labels where they weren't obstructing other stuff. 
So I didn't put this on top of something that I was going to refer to later. So try to keep your labels off to the side. Also, try to make sure that your arrows do not go long distances into the picture. It makes it hard to read. Let's go with a microscope example. Now here there is only one thing that we wanted to communicate that I knew that these were round or cocci cells and they were in a staphylo or grape-like cluster arrangement. Later on I would have put, if this were a gram stain, that these were gram positive staphylococci cells. Then down here I put that it was a micrograph or a picture taken through a microscope of staph aureus control. So we know what it is. If you're giving me a picture of your unknown, or as we're affectionately calling it, your pet, I want to know it's your pet, that we don't know for sure what it is. Also, put down the magnification. Well, that's pretty much it. I also have another video showing you how, uh, how I find it easiest to put in titles and labels and to crop and all of that fun stuff.